Welcome to the only daily podcast focusing on compliance news of the day. Each morning, start your day with a cup of coffee and Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, to hear about four of the top compliance, corruption, or leadership stories you will need to start your day. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. April 28, 2020, the Mike Ward edition. First up, from the Washington Post, OSHA releases guidance to keep meatpacking workers safe amid surging cases and food supply fears. The federal government finally issued joint coronavirus guidance for meat processing and packing facilities uh, amid outbreaks that have killed at least 17 workers and sickened more than 3,000 in need, threatening the nation's food supply. The interim guidance from the CDC and OSHA outlines procedures for cleaning shared equipment and reconfiguring workstations. The guidance includes how companies can use physical barriers to create at least six feet between employees who typically stand shoulder to shoulder in plants. It also calls for the use of personal protective equipment and changes to attendance policies so employees are not penalized for taking sick leave if they have coronavirus. As essential workers, those in meatpacking and processing industries need to be protected. Although it is unusual to see the Trump administration doing anything for worker protection. Uh, Next up, from the Wall Street Journal in the CIO Journal, it's a very interesting article um, about getting through highly uncertain times, a lesson learned by Irving Wadalski Berger. He has been through several, and uh, particularly with uh, IBM. And so he gives a few lessons, and I thought they were pretty good. Um, The first thing is you never want uh, to lose talent or your R&D investments. Um, So uh, keep those tight. Have trustful relationships uh, and trustful collaborations with your clients, business partners, and research community. Obviously, wise leadership is critical as well. So some interesting lessons from someone who has worked for IBM and gone through several crises with them, apparently. Uh, next up in our lead story, Mike Ward, a new, newly enshrined partner at Vincent Elkins. Uh, most recently, the chief compliance officer at Juniper Networks. He joined v and earlier this month and uh, well known to the compliance community for his work at Juniper. And he gives a... Um, a detailed interview to uh, Dylan Tokar over at the uh, Risk and Compliance Journal uh, talking about his hiring and moving back into private practice and uh, specifically around data analytics as being tools uh, to help detect and then uh, move to the proactive side of compliance. It's also a pool, uh, incredibly powerful tool for investigators in responding to allegations. So if you have that capability, you start on second base. It can be incredibly helpful for the company. It can be incredibly useful if you have to go in front of the Department of Justice. And finally, um, from the New York Times, Many in uh, Europe are frustrated with the slow pace of enforcement under the GDPR as Europe enacted the toughest online privacy um, law that went live almost two years ago. The law is struggling to fulfill its promise. Europe's rules have been uh, the victim of lack of enforcement, poor funding, limited staff resources, and of course sitting across from some of the top lawyers uh, literally in the world working for high-tech companies. Only one giant tech company has been penalized, a fine of 50 million euros uh, for Google to Google. There have been no uh, major fines or penalties announced against Facebook, Amazon, or Twitter, who were some of the uh, biggest uh, offenders uh, under prior uh, EU law and led to the passing of GDPR. So will GDPR live up? I hope you are staying safe and working from home. And even if one of the Republican governors has reopened your state, you're still exercising caution. You're staying safe, self-distancing, and isolating during this time. Thank you for listening. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network and a proud member of C-Suite Radio. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow.